Lift up your hands, everybody, given to give God worship where you are. The presence of His Majesty is here. Rata kavaya da vala to se da kanda dia. La sopra te la kosia da kavaya da vala ta. Rata kavaya da vala ta kavaya da vala ta kavaya da kavaya da vala ta. Reso koto la brega da kavara ta ya da kavara. Reto shada kav. Lift up your hands, everybody. The presence of His Majesty is here. Rato sada kabara diadas, lento sila babara tiada. What a mind to God you are! What a mind to God! Holy Ghost, throw your weight around in this place. Throw your weight around in this place. Beloved, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. In the next two minutes, I want you to pray in the Spirit non-stop. Open your spirit up. Open your spirit up. Open your spirit. God is about to speak. Open up your spirit. Zekabayada baratanda gabaya ratosia lesto prede tekabaya marakataya na balata sadai my ear to your ear Lord my spirit to your spirit my heart on fire my ear on fire my ear on fire my ear on fire my ear on fire my spirit on fire my heart on fire. Holy Ghost, I need to hear you. Rapota lada, rapapanda la kavaya da barata kausia. Lempro sopra ta, rekata rapat nele. Roto sha kavaya da, rapapanda la kavaya ta mana kavaya da das. Lepra da kavaya das. Heavenly Father, we ask that you throw your weight around in this place. Let there be vis visible deliverance today. Amen. Holy Ghost, I ask that you deliver people today by your fire and your word. Amen. Let us hear directly from you. Amen. Holy Spirit, throw your weight around in this assembly today. Amen. Prove that you are the master over the devil. Amen. Everything that is possible in your name, let it be available in this service. Amen. In the name of God the Father. Amen. In the name of God the Son. Amen. And of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you are blessed to be in church this morning, let me hear you shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let me hear you shout hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Glory. Jesus. Woo. I'll be preaching on the power of forgiveness today, but we'll stand to read God's word. This is a sermon that everybody needs. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Okay, just before I preach, if nobody has offended you before, please let me see your hand. Nobody has ever offended you. 
You have never been angry with anybody before. You have never been very upset before. So that I can just sit down and you come and preach to us. You will need to be the one to teach us. We need to know how you did it. Are you still here? So we'll be preaching on the power of forgiveness. Matthew chapter 6 verse 12. Matthew chapter 6 verse 12. Let's read together like a mass choir. One to go. Let's read it again. One to go. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our what? Our debtors. Please sit down. God bless you. We'll be looking at the power of forgiveness. Now, child of God, forgiveness, forgiveness must be a lifestyle for a believer. The Christian race is such that it is predicated on forgiveness. Now, if you came for the midweek service that we had this week, you would have known that forgiveness and remission of sin is the biggest thing that Jesus came for. The forgiveness of sin. And that is what the Christian experience is all about. It's about what? It's about forgiveness. That is why Jesus himself went to the cross of Calvary to die so that he can do what? He can forgive men. And if Jesus is a forgiving Jesus, then you have no option than to be a forgiving what? Believer. Are you still here? Matthew chapter 5. Verse 23 to 24. Now in that first scripture, the Bible was telling us that God forgives us as we forgive. Meaning that the same measure with which we show forgiveness is the same measure with which we receive it. Now Matthew chapter 5 verse 23 to 24. Let's read it together. One to go. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that what? That thy brother hath ought against thee. Next verse. Leave there thy gift. Thy, thy gift before, before the altar, the altar and, and go thy way. way. First, First be reconciled, reconciled to thy brother, brother and, and then come God. and offer what? Thy gift. This tells us as a child of God that God is more interested in the relationship that exists between family members. Is more interested in the relationship that exists between church members. Is more interested in the relationship that exists between Christian brothers. Is more interested in our relationship than in our gifts. Are you still here? Yes. Now, some of us, we are very good tight paying believers. Is that good? Yes. But beyond your tithing, God is interested in what? The relationship that exists between you and the fellow believers. And that's why when you read Matthew 23, for those that argue about tithe and all, that he said Jesus said we should not pay tithe, that's not correct. He was saying that you have left what? The weightier matters of the law. One of the weightier matters he was talking about was what? Was forgiveness. You can't be tithing, you can't be giving, you can't be displaying graces, you can't be showcasing all the giftings of the Spirit when you have left one of the fruits of the Spirit. Are you still here? So before your grace is forgiveness. Before your giving, forgiveness. Before your skill, forgiveness. Before your talent, forgiveness. So what is forgiveness? Forgiveness, this is when you stop feeling angry or resentful towards someone for an offense, flaw, or mistake. That's when you stop feeling angry. There are many of us that are angry permanently with everybody. Some of us are angry with our parents. We are angry with God. We are angry with ourselves. We are angry with the nation. We are angry ahead of those that will offend us. You are already battle ready for the person that has not offended you. Offenses can come in three ways. The first one is perceived offense based on a preconceived idea. What did I just say? 
a perceived offense. offense based on a preconceived idea. Now, this means that the person wasn't actually wrong, but you just assumed that this person has an hatred for me. You just believe a story. And lots of the times, why we hate people, or why we are unforgiving, or why we have animosity towards people, is not actually what the person did. It's possibly what somebody said about the person. Now, let me give you a story or a scripture in the Bible. Have you read this scripture before? Oh, that it is the child that the father loves that he does what? Chastises. That he does what? Chastises. What does chastise mean? Correct. Correct. Rebuke. Another one says it's the child that is scourged. Do you know what scourging means? To flog. But the Bible says it's the child that the father does what? Lost, but do you know sometimes you are beating your child out of what out of love so that his future or our future will not be destroyed? But do you know that child just preconceives it that what daddy hates me, mommy hates me, and you are doing it because you want to safeguard the future. And that child says, I will never forgive my parents. While I was four years old, they beat me as though they want to kill me. And for this cause, I will also inflict pain on them. So a believer that God is treating this way, for example, that is rebuking you because he loves you. If you have a preconceived idea of God, you will be thinking that at those times, God hates you. Are you still here? So sometimes the reaction that happens between family members is a function of love. But when the devil wants to play on your intelligence, what does he do? He misconstrues it and you begin to believe that that thing is something that is directed against you. Are you still here? Now the story was said of a family that had two children. Church, are you still here? Yes, sir. That had two children. The elder child was very bright academically. Very bright. And the younger one was not so bright. And for a very bright child, do you need extra lessons? No, sir. Do you need getting extra classes for the child? No, sir. Because the child is already what? Bright. Very bright. Now, when it got to the time that the younger one got to that same class, the parents looked at it that, ah, let's not what? Let's not allow this child's life go this way. Let's look for ways to what? Improve the child's life. So they decided to get what? A lesson teacher to teach what? The younger one. And the older one got very angry. That my parents, you are terrible. When me, I was the age of, age of my younger brother. None of you thought it wise to even say that what? Let me get it. Is it that you don't like to spend your money on me? Was that not a preconceived idea? But what the parents were doing, does that child really understand? No. But do you know that's how we are? Sometimes we just assume that this person is after us. They are after my life. They want to kill me. They don't like me. And the devil does what? He helps you to magnify what? That idea. And you begin to act with it. Are you still here? Yes, sir. The second source of offense is mistakes. What did I just say? Mistakes. Now, child of God, understand that there is no human being that is above mistake. You know, sometimes I, I say, the things that you are doing now, that you believe is correct, is the best, is tomorrow you will discover that it was actually a mistake. That there was a better approach to what? To what you are doing. So there is nobody that is immune to mistakes. As long as you are in this body, you will make mistakes one day or one time or the other. Are we still here? So yes, there are times that people genuinely make mistakes. They genuinely, honestly make mistakes. But sometimes because of you are dealing with a smart devil, he projects it into your heart as if what? The mistake was deliberate. It was intentional. They planned to frustrate you. They are after your life. As a parent sometimes, do you know you could be very hungry? And you tell your child, please go and bring my food from the kitchen. And the way you told the child, the child looked at it. That ah, mommy is very hungry and decides to run. So as he picks the food, he runs and he trips and throws away the food. 
But as the child is landing on the floor, you are shouting, thunder, fire you. I have always known it that you don't want me to leave. But does it mean that the child did it deliberately? No, it was sir. an honest mistake. In fact, the problem of that child was speed. He was trying to run to ensure that he gets it on time to you. But in the process of time, the child made what? A mistake. So sometimes offenses come through genuine mistakes. Are you still here? But I'll tell you the third one now. This one is deliberate offense. Deliberate offense. These are people that are deliberately out to annoy you. They are out to frustrate you. They are out to make your life unbearable. Some of them are the emissaries of the devil. They love to see you in pain. They love to see you cry. As you are progressing, there's something inside of them that is angry. Every time you have a good news, there's something that is sad in them. Anytime it looks as anything is working in your hand, there's a demon that arises in them that says, no, don't let it down. Yes, there are people like that. Those are the genuine offenses. But do you know what you need for these three levels of offenses is what? Is discernment to know the one that is operating through that person. Are you still here? Yes, sir. You know, the Bible says what? And Satan entered into Judas. Are you still here? Yes, sir. But do you know that even Judas did not know that the devil entered into him? So there are people that are working on preconceived ideas about you. What you do is what? You pray for them. So that they can get delivered from that devil. The one that is a genuine mistake, explain and do what? And move forward. Then the one that you know is after your life, then you have taught you spiritual warfare. You know what to do, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 3. A time, time to, to what? Kill. To kill. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Now, let me tell you the story of Joseph. I discovered from the story of Joseph that he actually did not do anything wrong against his family. Everything that was against Joseph was preconceived ideas. The first thing they felt that God was partial towards Joseph and they were angry. The second thing they felt his father or their father was what? Also what? Giving preferential treatment to who? To Joseph. Child of God, don't be deceived. It's not everybody that is happy with the progress of your life. You know, Jesus already told us that the enemies of a man's household shall be what? The people of, of what? Of his own household. So Joseph did not need any external enemy. All the enemies inside Joseph's family was enough to keep him busy for a lifetime. Genesis chapter 37 verse 3. We want to look at the life of Joseph now. Genesis chapter 37 verse 3. Now, let's read together one to go. The Bible says what? Now, Israel did what? Loved Love. Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a, a coat, coat of, of many, many colors. Color. So, the first reason why they hated him was because his father loved him more than the rest of them. And child of God, please, was it Joseph's fault that his father loved him? No, no. You know, my parents are seated now. I don't know the child they love the most. <clears throat> I don't know. The same way you two, your parents, you have the child you like the most. Even though you are lying at home that I love all of you equally. But you know it's a lie. You know the child in your heart. That, but imagine one child now rises up against the other. That is you that he loves. I will kill you today. I will sit that one's fault on a decision that he did not take. Are you still here? So that was his first problem. They hated him for a decision he did not take. They hated him for what he had no control over. The next thing they hated him for, his father gave him a coat of many colors. Do you know there are people that still hate their parents and their siblings today, even after 30 years? That daddy, I remember I asked you for a shoe how many years ago? 30 years ago. You did not buy it for me, but you bought that shoe for my sister. And if we look at your wardrobe now, you have over 30 shoes. And you are still holding on to the grudge of 30 years when somebody took it. And you now hate that your sister because of it. You know, if somebody, if you feel cheated, 
Is it not better to approach the person that you feel has the control over it? Like for example, if you're at home, if your parents is showing what preferential treatment, who are you to address? Is it not your parents? But you know you can't go that direction. So what do you do? You look for the weakest target, which is your sibling. And many families have been destroyed because of gifts. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Do you know that even gifts can be a problem? Yes. Spiritual gifts. A family member just rises up and God is speaking to the person. And the person is the one that always says, ah, we need to pray. The Lord said this. We need to pray. The Lord said this. We need to pray. The Lord said this. You will discover that after a while, especially African culture, they will leave what God is saying and start to say that what you are saying, you are not saying it with respect. That you told us God said, but the way you said God said was rude. What is important? Is it how we said it or what God said? But we know that what? It is jealousy about what God is doing that is already rising up in that family. Are you still here? Yes, sir. James chapter 1. James chapter 1 verse 17. The Bible says what? Every good gift. And every perfect gift is from what? Above. And come down, down from, from the, the Father, Father of light, with, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So if you are upset with somebody's graces and gifting, all of us have God to do what? To go to for that same grace. It's the same way as siblings. If you need a shoe, you need this from your parents. Do what? Approach your parents rather than slip it into a tread. The third thing they hated Joseph for was that Joseph had a dream. Let me say to your neighbor, say Joseph had a dream. Joseph had a dream. The Bible says he dreamed a dream and his siblings did what? They hated him the more. That's Genesis chapter 37 verse 5. And Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it his brethren and they hated him what? Yet, Yet the, the more. more. Child of God, does everybody not have equal right to dream? We do. No, I'm asking you, does everybody not have equal right to dream? We do, sir. So you discover that family members love to kill the person that has a dream, whereas they have equal opportunity also to do what? To dream their dream. If somebody wakes up in a family and begins to say, nations are coming to me, everybody will bow to me. The first thing, just like the parents of Joseph, would you keep quiet? I would you say, we will bow to you. Instead of you to be happy that one of you has a vision that can bring nations to your family. His dream was the problem. And everyone has equal opportunities to dream. His dream and vision made them uncomfortable. They are siblings who don't dream, but have issues with those that dream. When everybody's growing up in the family, what do you want to become? One says nothing. I don't want to become anything. I just want to eat and grow up. The other one, I want to become a pilot. No, no, he changes it. No, I want to become a medical doctor. No, 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 he changes it. I want to be a policeman. No, 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 I want to be a pastor. He changes it, but at least he's doing what? He's dreaming. And one day, the dream of that one becomes what? Becomes a reality. And you start getting angry. And you had equal opportunity to dream. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Anything you don't have in your destiny, seek it with humility and not with arrogance. Now, the brothers of Joseph knew that they did not have the capacity to see the future. But rather than with humility, call their brother that, how are you seeing this future? They decided that it's better that let all of us be in this darkness. That for one person to do what? To see the light. This is a demonic spirit. Genesis chapter 37 verse 7 to 10. Genesis chapter 37, verse 7 to 10. Okay, let's read together. For behold, we were binding what? Sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaf stood round about and made obeisance to what? My sheaf. Next one. Next verse. 
And his brethren, and his brethren said, said to him, him Shall thou indeed reign over us, us or, or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? us? And, and they hated him yet the more for, for what? His dreams, his dreams and for his words. words. Next verse. And, and he, he dreamed yet, yet another, another dream and told it to his brethren and, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made what? Obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? Now these brethren in verse 11 said, and his brethren did what? Envied him. But his father observed what? This saying. Now they hated him for what God was saying about his future. And they did not like to hear about it. There are some of you that the problem you have about your, in your family is the prophecy God has put on your life. Now, child of God, let me say this. We are talking about forgiveness. But please, there are some things God speaks to you as a believer. Even your family members, if they have not matured to the point that they can hear it, what do you do? You keep quiet. It's not everybody that has matured to the point that they can understand and accept what God is saying over your life. How do you tell a man that in the future you are going to serve me and you expect him to throw a party and celebrate? No. It's only a regenerated mind that God has done what? Has taken over that can receive that kind of prophecy. So they hated him for his prophecy. Any envious person is a, an enemy that is waiting to kill you. Are you understanding what I'm saying, church? Yes, sir. I said any envious person is it's what? An enemy. Is an enemy waiting. that is waiting to, to kill, you. kill you. Now, if you read the life of Joseph, the Bible said after that, they started having conspiracies. And they were plotting to kill who? Their own brother. And in all of these things, what has Joseph done to them? Nothing. Has Joseph taken anything from them? No, sir. Have Joseph fought any one of them? No, sir. Has Joseph cost any one of them? No, sir. But he just hated him because of what God was doing and the future that he had. And I decree over your life that everyone that gangs up against the prophecy of God over your life, fire will answer. Amen. Fire will answer. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Just follow me. I'm taking you somewhere. Genesis chapter 37. Verse 18. Genesis chapter 37, verse 18. Let's read one to go. And, and when, when they, they saw, saw him afar off, off even, even before, before he came, came near unto them, them, the Bible says what? They conspired, they conspired, conspired, conspired against, against him, him to do to what? Slay him. To slay him. How does a brother degenerate from envy to murder? But do you know there are people that is their family members that killed them? There are people that is their family members that told us assassins that this is the road he or she will pass. And have you noticed that really do you find any assassination attempt without an insider being what? A part of it. And what leads to it? One day you are sharing your vision. One day God is blessing you. And it starts to degenerate from jealousy, envy, to hatred, to conspiracy till they actually want you dead. And I decree every desire of the enemy over your life. It backfires by fire. Amen. It backfires by fire. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Psalm 37 verse 12. It says, the wicked plotted against the just and gnashed up him with his teeth. And Psalm 37 verse 32 says, the wicked watcheth the righteous and does what? Seeketh to do what? To slay him. Do you know that oftentimes family members are happy to supervise the death of their own family members? When God raises one person in the family, they are happy to celebrate and supervise it. But do you know if it is an outsider, the way they celebrate outsiders, you will think that they are family members. But their own family member, they don't think anything of it. They think, what has he achieved? What is he feeling like? It's just because they like him. It's just because mommy favored her. It's just because they don't celebrate any greatness. And that's why Jesus said what? A prophet is without honor what? In his own in house. Child of God, even if God raises you today, 
and you are a prophet, your eyes are open, your ears are open, your greatest resistance will be your family members. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Do you know Joseph's brothers? They were trying to supervise his death. But do you know if Joseph had come from another nation? Oh, they will celebrate him. That what a man of vision. Look at how his vision has changed the landscape of this place. Look at how he did this. Look at how. But because he came from their own what? From their own family, they could not discern the glory on his life. Genesis chapter 41 verse 57. The Bible says, and all countries came into what? Egypt. To Joseph for to buy corn. Because that the famine was so what? Saw in what? All the land. Now they got to a situation. You already know the story. Now there was a dream when Joseph was in prison. And they saw that there will be seven years of what? Of prosperity. And there will be seven years of what? Of famine. And now Joseph interpreted that dream. And Pharaoh said to him. That's what? Who would I put in charge of this thing other than you? And they began to save for seven years. Can you remember that story? Yes, sir. And after seven years, they began to do what? Disburse what they had saved. And now the Bible said that in all countries there was famine and in all lands. Meaning that his brothers now had to leave their own country to do what? To come to Egypt to do what? To get grain to eat. Now imagine if his family member had celebrated that grace on his life. Where would Joseph have been using that vision that he had? No, church, I'm asking, where would he have been using that vision? Is it not his own land that would have had food to eat and other lands would be coming? But because of jealousy, anger, unforgiveness, they did not care. They would rather let that glory disappear and they would go and suffer. Do you know there are some of you that the gracing upon your brother's life or your sister's life is enough to change your story. But the arrogance, the pride in your life is too much. You will say, I would rather die than to talk to my brother. Are you still here? Yes, sir. When Moses was complaining that, oh God, I'm a stammerer. How do I go and meet Pharaoh to speak before him? What did God say? Go and meet Aaron. He said, look, there is who? Aaron, your brother, what? Beside you. Meaning that everything that a family needs majorly is in that family. But we don't have the spirit of discernment enough. We would rather ensure that that glory die. If you have one that is rising in your family, instead of everybody should make noise about it. Make noise. That nations begin to hear that something is happening in your family. Make noise about it. Shout about it. That something is happening here that the nations can come to. But you would rather put it down and everybody in the family gets stranded. You know somebody, God raises somebody. He has money in the family. Everybody is thinking of how to snatch the money rather than thinking of how the money can increase that becomes a generational wealth. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Now, let me show you the opportunities that Joseph had to revenge. You know, they planned to kill him. Can you remember? Yes. But God did not allow it to work. Yes. Now, let me show you the opportunities that Joseph had in his lifetime to revenge. Now, the first one says that they came to Egypt. You know, when they were looking for food, they took themselves from Israel and went where? To Egypt to look for food. Do you know at that time, that was the best time for Joseph to say what? That this is the Lord's doing. I was staying on my own. What you did 12 years ago, the Lord is the one that brought, you know, God, I didn't go and look for them. They are the ones that did what? That came to look for me. And you know, the Bible said they did not even recognize Joseph. So that was the best time to do what? To finish all of them. Kill his ten brothers. But do you know what? Joseph never did it. So child of God, there are opportunities for revenge that God will bring your way. Please, child of God, it's not every opportunity to revenge that is God's direction. Mm. Do you understand what I just said? I said, it's not every what opportunity to revenge that is God's what direction. You know, sometimes we we'll justify it that, oh God, if it's not you that wants me to kill them, why did you not allow this one to happen to? Sometimes God gives you that revenge opportunity to teach you how to forgive. 
Sometimes you will forgive with tears. Do you think it was easy for Joseph? Joseph knew they wanted to kill him. They didn't just want to sell him. They wanted to do what? They wanted to kill him. And ten of them brought themselves to the slaughter lab. And he said, no, I won't do it. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Do you know David had that same opportunity with Saul? Can you remember? Yes. That he saw Saul sleeping and what? And his arm bare. And he did what? He took his picture and made noise that look at it, oh, and he ran away. And he said, No, you should have killed him. He said, God forbid that I lay my hands on the anointed of the Lord. He said, God forbid. So some opportunities of revenge will present themselves to you as a believer. It's not every opportunity of revenge that you take. Are you still here? Yes, sir. You know, sometimes my wife and I, maybe we are discussing. And she sees me laughing with some people and talking. And she's like, but you know what these people said behind you. I say, I know. But sometimes we move forward. We must act to be mature believers. I say, it's not everything you know that you act with. Some you will continue to act like you don't know. The only thing is that you have to fortify yourself in the spirit. But you keep acting like what? You don't, because by the time all of us revenge, you do me, I do you, man, no go vex, Abby, Until there's nobody left in the land. Until what? There is nobody left. I do me, I do you. Everybody has cancelled everybody. Everybody has killed everybody. Everybody has destroyed everybody. Who will be left? Are you still here? Yes, sir. Do you know there came a time that he put money in their bags? After they bought, he put all their money, what? In their bags. And he decided to let them go. Do you know that was a perfect time to frame them up? And say what? These people are what? Are criminals. They came to do what? To steal in this land. And they will gather them, burn them, kill all of them and what? And nobody will talk about. And he will say, God has given me victory over my enemies. Victory at last. But you know what? Joseph did not do it. He was a man of discernment. He did not do what? He did not. Some of you, the small opportunity you had for revenge against your brother, against your fellow chorister, against your demand, you have used it. Some of you, till now, you are still praying on your prayer altar. Holy Ghost, kill my director. Holy Ghost, kill my church leader. Holy Ghost, kill them. They have offended me. Kill them. If we have offended you, we, we cannot die. <laughs> are you still here? But do you know that if he had done that revenge, his brothers would have died, no problem. But that thing would have affected his father more. And it would have affected his youngest brother, what? Benjamin. Those ones did not know anything about what? The conspiracy. They were never there. The father loved him. The father took care. But imagine that the father hears that what? On one day, ten of my children were what? Were killed. And eventually finds out that it was one, one of his own that did what? That killed all of them. How would he eat? How would he live? And of course, you know that Joseph also loved his father. So that error would have been what? Against it. But the spirit of vengeance at the time is operating in your life. You are not thinking right. It's after you have done it that you now remember that what? Oh, I should not have done this thing. Are you still here? Now let me read Genesis chapter 42 verse 36 to you. The Bible says, And Jacob their father said unto them, Me have ye bereaved of my children. Joseph is not, and Simeon is not. And ye will take Benjamin away. He said what? All these things are what? Against me. So if Joseph had done it, everything he did would have been what? Against his father. The other time he had opportunity to revenge. You know, they came to buy food. What would it cost him to increase the price by three times or four times? So that all the money they brought, he would just give them one cup and tell them to do what? They will celebrate the one cup. At least it will give them food till tomorrow before they die. But Joseph knew that what he was doing was what? To punish them. But do you know he did not do it? Rather than that, he even still returned their money to them. Child of God, you, can you do it? Are you still here? Are you still here? Yes, sir. Now, perspective in offense is very key. What did I just say? 
Perspective in offense. No, church of voice is looking for my trouble. I said what? Perspective, perspective in offense. Perspective in what? Offense. Do you know this was one of the greatest things that Joseph had that kept him? His perspective. And I'm going to show you from scripture. Is what? His perspective. His perspective. Now, can you remember um, the story of Penina and Anna? Yes, sir. Can you remember? Yes, sir. The Bible says what? Penina mocked Anna to Saul. But on what day did you hear that what? Anna was praying, oh God, kill Penina. My second wife, kill her, kill her. No, there was no day she was praying. Rather, we saw a life that the Bible said what? For this child, I did what? I prayed. Pray. She left the person that looked like an enemy because she was a family member and did what? And concentrated on what she needed from God. And her prayer life did what? Produced a result. Rather than looking for who to kill with the prayer life and at the end of the day when Penina is dead, would she still have had a child? No, sir. So some of us, the place we are putting our anger, yes, you will kill the person, but after that, do you still have what you are looking for? Genesis 45 verse 5. Genesis 45 verse 5. Let's read Joseph's perspective. One to go. Now, now therefore, therefore be, be not, not grieved. grieved. This was his brothers. They were apologizing and begging. He says, now therefore, be not grieved, nor not angry with what? Yourselves. yourselves that, that ye sold me either. either. For God did send me before you to, to do what? Life. To preserve life life. So all what he was suffering, he was seeing it from the lens of what? That God sent him ahead to do what? To preserve his family life and the family member. So child of God, there are some offenses that is happening to you today. Look at the brighter side of it. If people are conspiring against you, maybe God wants to increase your prayer life. Leave them. Don't physically go attacking anybody. You understand? Maybe God wants to increase your prayer. See it as an opportunity to grow your prayer life. Because when your perspective to offense is right, forgiveness will be easy. Mm. I don't know if you understand what I just said. Yes, sir. When your perspective to what? Offense is right. Forgiveness will be what? Will be easy. Will be easy. You know, sometimes the people can even bypass you. Maybe they were sharing things and all of that. And maybe they didn't give it to you. And naturally, you get very offended. Sometimes you can just look at it. I think God is checking me and training me on humility. You understand? Have a good perspective to offense. That way you don't have to tie anybody down in your heart. Because trust me, the end result of unforgiveness is hell. There is no two ways about it. It does not matter how you justify it. They were the ones that did this. They were the ones that did this. They did this. They did this. Nobody is interested. The end destination of unforgiveness is hell. Is hell. So how would you labor serving God, sitting down, listening to the word for 30 years, 20 years, and all you want to do is to go to hell? Because of something that happened 30 years ago, 15 years ago that you can move on from? Please change your perspective to offense. Are you still here? Yes, sir. And please, child of God, never put anybody on a pedestal that is too high that they cannot offend you. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Please make allowance for errors. As you are living your life, as you meet this brother, make his allowance for offense. As you are meeting this sister, make his allowance for what? For offense. Yes. As your brother, make allowance for his offense. That one day is coming, he will still do what? He will offend me. So plan ahead to forgive. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Lack of forgiveness can waste the whole family through death. Lack of what? Forgiveness. It can waste the life of a whole family. Now imagine, like I said, if Joseph chose to take that revenge, the tribe of Israel that we're shouting, 12 tribes of Israel, how many would have remained? Zero. No, I'm asking how many would have remained? Dinah was already gone. It would have just remained maybe what Joseph and Benjamin. So it would have gone to what? Maybe two tribes. Everybody would have what? Been gone. So sometimes that unforgiveness, it would end up wasting everybody in your family. One after the other. You just, this one has stroke, this one has IBP, this one this because he could not talk to you. Everybody's just dying and everybody in the family gets wiped out prematurely. And you say it was the devil. No, it was unforgiveness. Are you still here? Yes, sir. 
Unforgiveness can waste a family's resources. Are you still here? Now, when they went to Egypt to buy, you know, they eventually went back with their money. So their money will still be able to do something for them. But imagine if Joseph had tripled the price. There is no time they will still not die because they will not have money to survive it. There are things that your family members can sort you out with without stress, without pain. But that unforgiveness, I will never talk to her. I will never talk to him. Is the reason why your life is stagnant and frustrated. There are people that your brother knows that he can talk to that roads will open for you. But that arrogance, I cannot. What she did 30 years ago, what she did to her, we have vowed we will never help ourselves. Continue. Continue to waste resources. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Unforgiveness can lead to wasted efforts. You know, imagine they land in Egypt and Joseph sees them and says, just gather those 10 people and send them back what? To where they are coming. Child of God, you can waste your life and waste efforts because they are things that people can get done for you. But you have held them in your heart. Do you know there are people that are sick and know that if somebody prays for them, they can get well. But they will say, we rather die. After you have died, have you forgotten the repercussion of the, or the ripple effect of that? That even what? Your children will be left without a father or a mother. You would, have you forgotten the ripple effect just because of one person? Wasted efforts. Unforgiveness degenerates when we don't speak about our grievances. Are you still here? Yes, sir. It degenerates when we don't what? Speak about our grievances. When we don't speak about what? Our grievances. Our grievances. Now, let me tell us a story very quickly. The story of Absalom. Can you remember that story? And yes, Amnon sir. and Tamar. The children of David. Church, can you remember? Yes, sir. Okay, now, David had children. One was Absalom, one was Amnon, one was Tamar. And he got Tamar and Absalom are from the same mother and father. Amnon is from David, but another mother. So there got to a time that Amnon started lusting after Tamar, meaning that is what? Half-sister. He started lusting after her. And he wanted to sleep with her. And no, she said, no, you can't do this. It's not permitted in Israel. That worst case scenario, talk to my father, David the king. And what? This thing will be done the proper way and all of that. But he insisted. Then he had a demonic advisor called Jonadab that said what? No, pretend that you are sick. When she comes, tell her that she should give you food. When she comes, do what? Rape her. And because that's what he wanted to do before, that advice what met what he, his desire. And instantly, he took to that advice. He jumped on his bed and pretended what? Like he was sick and all of that. And he raped her and she went to complain to Absalom. And you know, Absalom should have gotten angry and at that time challenged Amnon. Can you remember the story? Yes, sir. But do you know what? Absalom kept quiet. He did not talk about it. Now, 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 20. Let me read the New Living Translation. He said, Our brother Absalom saw her and asked, Is it true that Amnon has been with you? Well, my sister, do what? Keep quiet for now, since he's your brother. Don't you worry about it. So Tamar lived as a desolate woman in her brother Absalom's house. Do you know if only Absalom had spoken at that time, that battle would have ended. They would have quarreled and quarreled. And after that, David would have intervened and that matter would have been what? Over. But he kept quiet. When we keep quiet, it's a dangerous thing. Now, the second thing is when you keep quiet, you start to dwell on what? On that offense. Do you know if you are cooking and you have a cover on the pot? You know, it's very hot. But if you open it, what happens? Steam does what? Runs out of it and it's not as hot as it was before. So sometimes when you talk, when somebody offends you, what does it do? It allows steam to do what? Come out of your life and you know that you come under less pressure. But when you don't allow that steam to come out, you start to dwell on it and you know the devil is a master at doing what? At magnifying things. So when you are seated on your own, the devil comes back. Is it you they were talking to today? You have lost ginger before the no feet. 
at your age, how can a boy be talking to you like that? But you know, if you had settled that issue, maybe you said what was on your mind, and you had settled it, the devil will not have a place to talk. But because you didn't talk, you kept quiet. The devil is doing what? He's applying pressure to it. He's applying pressure to it. He's applying pressure to it. Second Samuel chapter 13, verse 22 and 23. Let's read that scripture. Second Samuel 20, 13, 22 and 23. One to go. And, and though Ab Absalom never spoke to Amnon about this, he hated Amnon what? Deeply because of what he had done to his sister. Then read verse 23. Church, I cannot hear you. Two years later. How many years later? Two years later. How many years later? Two years later. Now, understand that he kept quiet. Then after two years, he now planned a feast and said, this is the day of revenge. And begged David that all his brothers should attend and all. And Amnon went to that party and what happened? Absalom did what? killed him. Because of unforgiveness, he planned to kill his brother for two years. But do you know that that was the end of Absalom himself? He never enjoyed his life after that. Because he started running up and down till what? Joab also did what? Killed, killed him. him. So at the end of the day, everybody starts killing everybody because of what? Unforgiveness. So this was a family member. Two years he was plotting. Child of God, let out that steam. Don't brood over it. Somebody offends you, speak now. Speak what? Now. Speak now. You are keeping it. You say, no, no. I have the gift of temperance. I can control myself. Ah, you are lying. That temperance that will still turn to malice, turn to what? Warfare that will turn to death. You are lying under the guise that you have what? Self-control. You don't have any self-control, sir. Speak what? Out and let it die what? There. And you move on. Two years after. Now, simple thing. A rape matter is very bad. Rape, very bad. Not supported under any circumstance. But look at what ended it. Death straight. After two years. Child of God, there are three groups of people you must forgive. Are you still here? Yes, sir. There are three groups of people I want you to forgive today. The first person I want you to forgive is God. Forgive God. <laughs> you know why I said you should forgive God? Why, sir? Some of you, that's why you are not praying again. Some of you, that's why you have stopped serving God. Some of you, that's why you are now lukewarm. You're on your way to hell because you have refused to forgive God. Father, if I prayed five years ago that my mother should not die, why did my mommy still die? It tells me that you are not a kind God and I will never forget. So from today, I won't serve you again. You know, sometimes this is a preconceived idea about what God is doing. If only you could enter into the mind of God, you would thank him that your mother died at that time. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. Because you can only see a part of what he is doing. You cannot see the whole picture of what God is doing. So you will judge God from the lens of your own small view. And you will think that God is being unfair to you. Child of God, you are operating from a limited position and from a dark place. If only God can show you what he is doing, you will be pleased with all of his decisions. A God that could have made the complexities of this world in six days and rested and did not consult anybody. How do you now think it's over the issue of your mother that he can make a mistake? So some people have said, I will never go to church again. God, I will never join the workforce again. God, I will never preach the gospel again. God, I will never do this again. God, I will never forgive God so that you don't go to hell. There are some of you, you have, the person you have a grudge against is with God. It's not any other person. It's with God. Some of you have looked at, how can this brother that we trained three years ago is already operating like this in the realm of the spirit. I, 25 years, I have never seen something that is close to this. And you get angry with God and you say, God, be using those you want to use. We are tired. We, we are not working again. Forgive God. Because if you don't forgive God, you are signing your death warrant. So for the safety of your life, help me say to your neighbor, say, neighbor, please forgive God. Neighbor, please forgive God. Isaiah 55 verse 9 says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways, what? 
higher than your ways and my thoughts than what? Your thoughts. The second set of people to, of, to forgive is those that have offended you. Some of them, they are perceived offense. There's no real substance between behind your offense. You just sat down, you thought about it, you just planned it in your mind, and the devil sowed a seed in your mind. Please forgive them. Because there's no justification that you have for it, you will still go to hell. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. There's no justification, so please forgive them. Those that have made genuine mistakes, still forgive them. Those that have genuinely offended you, forgive them, but block access for them to come back to your life. I don't know whether you understand what I just said. Those that did what? Genuinely offended. You discerned that the devil was the one behind them. Forgive them. But please don't give them a knife to kill you the second time. Block the access to your life. Greet them. Wish them well. But give them some distance. Let them stay their way. But do what? Forgive them. You know, people will say forgive and forget. Have you heard it before? What does it mean? Your brain does not have a problem, so you can't forget. So what it is telling you is that forgive, but don't act with it. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. Forgive, but don't what? Don't act with it. So that's what I'm saying. Those that have offended you genuinely, forgive them. You understand what I'm saying? But don't give them the privilege to do it again. Because after they have killed you, they will still repent and God will still forgive them. That's right. So don't be the one to die. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Forgiveness is a bridge that everyone must use in destiny. So allow others to pass through it. What did I just say? Allow others to pass Forgiveness through Forgiveness is a bridge that all of us must pass through. There is no body that will not pass through the bridge of forgiveness. So in your time, let others through pass so that you too can pass through that road of forgiveness. The third set of people that you have to forgive is forgive yourself. There are some of us, the problem we have is ourself. Let me tell you, child of God, even if you have committed seven abortions, as bad as it is, it is murder. The day you say God... I repent. Forgive me. What has he done? He has forgiven you. So you are the one that should now forgive yourself. Some of you have beaten yourself more than God has beaten you. Some of you have held yourself by the neck more than God has held you. You feel I have let my parents down. I've let my family down. I've let God down. I've let the church of God down. I've let the nation down. There was so much that was invested in me. Look at the mistake I have made. Yes, you have made that mistake, but there is the remission of sin. That is why Jesus died. He has forgiven you the day you did what? You repented of that sin. Child of God, forgive yourself. If God forgives you and you don't forgive yourself, you are still stuck. If God forgives you, if everybody forgives you, if you have not forgiven yourself, you can still not move forward. So, child of God, it's time to forgive you. Yes, I know you made many mistakes, but please forgive yourself. Is anybody ready to pray? Yes, sir. Have you been blessed? Yes, sir. Okay, please, let's rise to our feet. Let's rise to our feet. Let's rise to our feet. I want you to lift up your hands, everybody. Ask God for mercy. I want you to pray with everything that you have. Ask God for mercy. Some of us have used the strongest of cords to tie people in our hearts. Ask God to forgive you. 
Pray us in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we Church, I cannot hear you. Ask God, God for mercy. Yeah, God Lord, forgive me. So mercy this morning in the Every name of way Jesus. I have helped in people in my heart in unforgiveness, have, have mercy. Heart, oh God, in every way I'm going through unforgiveness. Some right of you now, are holding your parents in your heart. In the name of Jesus. Some of you are holding your spouse in your heart. Some of you are holding your children in your heart. Lord, have mercy, Lord. Some of you have said you will never forgive. Ask God for mercy. Ask God for mercy. Ask God for mercy. Say, God, show mercy. Have mercy on me. You said, Oh God, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Lord, I repent of that sin of unforgiveness. Have mercy on me. I repent of that sin of unforgiveness. Have mercy on me. Have mercy, Lord. I repent of that sin of unforgiveness. Have mercy on me. I repent of that sin of unforgiveness. Have mercy, Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Jesus, have mercy on me. 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 For in Jesus' victorious name we have prayed. Amen. Child of God, you will get to some points in your life that you want to forgive people and you will need to cry. Because your brain is functional. You can still see the visible impact of what they did in your life. But even if it means crying, cry, but let them go. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. So that your life is not in that. Your destiny is not in that. Let them go. Let them go. So I want you to close your eyes, lift up your hands and ask God for grace. Grace to forgive grace to let people go. Everyone that has offended you, some of them, you know their names now. Mention it. Mention it. Because this might be the last opportunity you have now. You, it might be the last opportunity. Mention their name. Call their names. This name, I let you go. I release you. This name, I release you. This name, I release you. My wife that I've said I will not let you go, I release you. My husband, I let you go. Might begin to call their name. You know it in your heart. The people you have said, receive that grace to let go. Receive that grace now. Release them. Release them. Release them in your heart. So that your life can move forward. Ask God for grace. Only God can give the grace to forgive. Only God can give that grace. Only God can give that grace that lets people go. Let offense be taken out of your life. Let offense be taken out of your life. Ask God, God, give me the grace. Let offense be taken out of my life. I receive the grace to let them go. I receive grace to let them go. I receive grace. All those that have held in my heart, those that have offended me, justifiably, on unjo- I release them now. I release them. I let you go. That your blood can wash me anew. That I can hear your spirit again. That the Holy Spirit can enter my life again. I release them. They offended me. They cheated me. But I let them go. I let them go. Just like Joseph did. I let them go. Every revenge that I planned. I have bought them now. Every revenge I have planned. I have bought them. Every revenge that I have planned, I have bought them. Every revenge that I have planned, I have bought them. Every revenge I have planned, I have bought them. For in Jesus, victorious name we have prayed. Amen. All eyes closed. I ask in the name of Jesus that the grace to let go comes upon you. Amen. I decree that everything that you have held up in your heart that is killing you spiritually and drying you up physically, I decree let them lose their grip over you now. Amen. Every satanic counselor over your life that is counseling you against the dictates of God, I decree that their voice becomes silenced now. Amen. Their voice becomes silenced now. Amen. Their voice becomes silenced now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen.
Amen. Receive empowerments to forgive. Amen. Receive enablements to forgive. Amen. Receive the grace to forgive. Amen. Everyone that has offended you, I decree that the Holy Ghost releases them from your Amen. heart. The Holy Ghost releases them Amen. from your heart. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree that this week you will obtain mercy. Amen. This week you will obtain favor. Amen. This week you will obtain grace. Amen. This week you will obtain strength. Amen. This week you will obtain ability. Amen. This week men will come to your rescue. Amen. This week nations will favor you. Amen. This week policies will favor you. Amen. This week systems will favor you. Amen. This week structures will favor Amen. you. In the name of God the Father. Amen. And of the Son. Amen. And of the Holy Ghost. Amen. God bless you. Amen.